So recently we had a potential customer approach us about blocking a specific website from their users on the network. This potential client is running PFSense and they wanted to know how this could be accomplished. So this request was a little bit unique in that they wanted to block a subdirectory of the website, not the actual website itself. They wanted to leave that open. So leave the main page open, but block this page of the website, if that makes sense. It's basically a subdirectory or also known as URL path filtering. And that is a little bit more challenging because normally it's basically block the whole website or not, at least when you're doing it natively in PFSense. So today I just wanted to demonstrate how you can block URL paths with PFSense, Squid, and SquidGuard. Let's talk about Squid Proxy. Is it still relevant in today's computing world here in 2023 and going into 2024? The short answer is yes. Now, if you found this video, you probably already know what Squid Proxy is, but for those of you who don't, Squid Proxy is widely regarded as a web caching proxy server, right? Widely regarded as a caching proxy for the web. In a nutshell, what that means is it has the ability to cache websites. So if you're on a slow connection, you can then access the cache pages a lot faster than you normally would if you had to re-request the web page each and every time. We typically do not use Squid Proxy in our deployments for the web caching functionality. Rather, we use it as a web content filter, blocking web pages, blocking by keyword, or blocking by URL path. One of the things I don't like about Squid Proxy, and I think a lot of people don't, is that the project seems to be largely abandoned. Their website hasn't been updated in about three years, and it's still running HTTP, and it just doesn't feel like Squid Proxy is regularly updated or worked on. The other issue with Squid Proxy is that it has a lot of overhead in implementation. Basically, you can run Squid Proxy in two modes, non-transparent mode with SSL certificates or transparent mode without SSL certificates. When you're using SSL certificates, it creates unique challenges with Squid in that you have to have a certificate installed on your endpoints and or whatever you want to go through the proxy. Otherwise, the SSL interception doesn't happen. The problem with that is you get the overhead of having to deploy certificates to all your endpoints. That could be hundreds or thousands of computers. The other issue is that it's not really feasible, if at all even possible, to get these certificates on your IoT devices such as tablets mobile devices, iPads, iPods, anything that takes a damn IP address and gets on the Wi-Fi or on the network, how are you gonna get those certificates to those devices? Um, those devices may very well not even support that. So then you're stuck and limited to just using it on actual computers. Squid tends to have some quirkiness with it. You may get different behavior among browsers or different brow browser versions such as Firefox updated, now Squid is broken, it's not working, it's not blocking what we want it to block. Squid works in this browser, but they, the user downloaded Google Chrome and it's not working in Google Chrome. You'll run into little nuances like this, but I assure you, once you get all this ironed out, Squid works very well and reliably. Um, and I would actually recommend it in specific use cases. We recently did a blog post about this, on our website, so if you wanna know more details, check out the blog. But at this time, I'm not gonna be showing, going over how to set up Squid and all that and configure it, but I did want to just demonstrate how Squid can work and may work for you and how easy it is. Um, the one other thing that I love about Squid is that it integrates nicely with PFSense. In order to get the most out of Squid, you're gonna to need to pair it up with SquidGuard and use it in non-transparent mode with certificates. If we take a look at installed packages, you will see I have SquidGuard as well as Squid installed. Um, like I said, just find that in available packages and click install, nothing fancy there. Once it's installed, you'll head over to services, you'll go to Squid Proxy Server, and what you wanna do is enable it. Um, there's a couple settings here um, that you'll set. I, like I said, I'm not gonna get go too into details on this, guys. It's really just a demonstration. I do have enable SSL filtering, and the mode, man in the middle mode, is set to splice whitelist 
bump otherwise. In a nutshell, splice means don't inspect the traffic, bump means inspect the SSL traffic. Now you might be wondering, why do I need squid, proxy, and squid guard? Can't I just use one or the other? Well, just to fill you in, squid guard is dependent on squid proxy, and you cannot install squid guard as standalone. On the other hand, you certainly can install squid proxy as standalone, and you do not have to install squid guard. Squid guard gives you more flexibility with content filtering. Now, if we head over to services go down to squid guard proxy filter very basic configuration going on here but the main thing is you want to check mark that and hit apply actually before you even enable that you are going to want to create a target category click on target categories and what you will do is create a list here i already have one i've created a block list so let's just edit this i did domain list and i'm blocking this website as an example filehippo.com and then here's where you can do the URL filtering. So as you can see, I'm using my own website as a test. So reasonableitservice.com forward slash blog and then reasonableitservice.com forward slash about. So what that means is I should still be able to get to the primary website. However, if I try to go to the about page or the blog page, it should be blocked. Um, regular expression is cool because what you can do here is block by keyword. You can think of the regular expressions as keywords. Um, obviously this is URL path filtering. This is neither of these is supported by the standalone squid proxy. That is why you're going to get the most out of squid if you pair it with squid guard, especially if you wanna focus on content filtering. Okay, so now that I have that the way I want it, I'm just gonna click save on that. Okay, next up I'm gonna go over to common ACL. Under target rules list, if we hit this plus sign, our list should now show up here, and it does. So all you need to do is select an action for that. I, I am doing deny because I wanna block that, right? So just set that to, to deny, and then you hit save. Another thing that has to happen in order for this to work is the certificates that I had mentioned. What you have to do is create a CA in PFSense by going to system and then cert manager. Not gonna get into that right now. But once you create the CA, it's really straightforward. You'll export that out. And then you will need to import that into all your endpoints. So here's my endpoint. If we go to cert manager and you wanna import that certificate from PFSense into the trusted root certificates, if we take a look here, you can see that I have imported the certificate. Great, I just called it squid, all good. It's as easy as that. And literally all you would do is just, um, what, right click this folder, um, import, and then you just browse for your certificate. Next up on the endpoints, again, this has to happen for all endpoints, you'll go into the proxy settings and you'll wanna enable the manual proxy setup and then point it at your proxy on the port that you've configured. By default, it's 3128. This is where the test proxy server is at. Okay, let's go ahead and test our proxy server now. I do have a test URL here that goes to an insecure website, which is using HTTP on port 80. And as you can see, the default behavior of Squid Proxy is that it blocks it because it is not a secure website. Now, if we go over to try and access an adult website, if you recall under target categories, we put a keyword in here. So what this means is anything with porn in the domain is going to be blocked. So that could be porn.com, pornhub.com, porno.com. So let's test that out. Hopefully this doesn't make a liar out of me. Aha, it sure is blocked once again by squid. If we go to, if we try, yep. Uh, as long as porn is contained in the name of the domain, it will be blocked. So if you're looking to block adult websites, this could be a suitable solution for you. Now let's get into that URL path filtering that I talked about. Let's demonstrate that. If we go to our website, you can see that the primary domain is accessible and even some of the subdirectories or pages of the primary domain are also acceptable. However, if you recall, 
we have blocked these URL paths, which is the blog page and the about page. So let's see if that works. If we go back to the home page, we click on blog, and it is blocked. 403 forbidden. If we try to go to about, it is also blocked. So as you can see, SquidGuard has effectively blocked a subdirectory of a web page and or done URL path filtering. Great. Now, if you also recall, we had blocked filehippo.com outright. And let's test that out as a final test here. And it is blocked by Squid as well. Lastly, I just wanted to do a quick mention on how Squid and SquidGuard handle TLS version 1.3. And as you can see, it's able to, to successfully intercept the traffic for TLS version 1.3. How do I know this? Well, because my website, for example, is running TLS version 1.3. If we click this little lock icon, we go to connection secure, more information. We can then see under technical details that my website is doing TLS version 1.3. So for those who are saying that Squid is, is non-usable because it's completely insecure, it doesn't support TLS 1.3, well, as you can see, I've demonstrated here, it looks to be doing the job. So there you have it. As you can see, Squid can st still serve a purpose. Here in 2023 and going into 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're still fans of Squid over here. Let me know your thoughts on Squid. Are you still using it?